Let's um let's shift to the other plated option that they came out with, and that's the Tecton X. Tecton. Sorry to say tech the Tecton. The Tecton. Uh, the Tecton. Let's talk about the Tecton <laughs> X. Uh, so this is a, a new trail offering that they've got, and it kind of has a lot of semblance of the Zanel that they came out with last year, except it's a little bit higher stack because it's got this kind of dual density mid mid midsole where it has the Profly top sole and then an e more e traditional EVA on the bottom. And uh, yeah, wider base, carbon plated. What's, what's been y'all's experience? Double carbon plated, that's right. Um, talk about that plate, talk about the running experience you guys have had in it. What would you say? Yeah, I've been talking a lot, so I'll let Matt go. This, this is honestly my favorite of the shoes that we've tested from this round. Um, there is one thing that doesn't quite work for me, and that's something that actually will work very well for others. But this was the only one where I actually felt like, oh, there's actually a bouncy foam in here. And that's mm -hmm. it was it's surprising to me because I was expecting this to be a little bit more firm, but there's actually a bounce. And there's this shoe has actually worked very well on. I did like I think 10, 12 miles on road and had no trouble. Mm -hmm. Now I wouldn't recommend that, but you can <clears> definitely get away with that. And I the lugs on my left side, believe it or not, are still are there. they intact? They what? are intact. So the kudos on that durability. But the foam actually feels like again all the other stuff has felt a little firm. This one actually felt like it had some bounce to it. I don't know if that's right. the fact that the, the plate wasn't, it's, it's only on, it's paralleling. I'm not sure, but, and even if there's still some flexibility to this, that might be a breaking in. But I like the concept of the dual plate because it creates some inherent stability there that I can definitely feel. And it's just, it's a solid ride. It feels like a shoe that you can use as a trainer but also something that feels great when you pick the pace up. It is a little stiff though. The one thing that didn't work for me, um, I'm not sure if anybody else noticed this, but there is a slight valgus to the heel. So for, for in normal terms, that means the heel back here is pitched in just slightly like this. I'm over exaggerating this. Um, and I noticed that almost immediately like my heel, the rest of the foot, I, I don't feel that at all. Um, so I generally need a little bit more of the opposite direction, but I was able to get away with plenty of miles in this. Um, so for those people that t I think tend to go roll out a little bit too far or maybe at risk for ankle sprains going this way, this actually might be a really, really good option for them. But, the, you know, everything else is doing really good. I, this is by far my favorite of all the, the shoes that they sent us this round. Yeah. Yeah, it's such a fun shoe, and I think the plate's almost double a little bit as a rock plate as well. Yeah, Like with the definitely. Zanal, when you're going through technical trails, um, I love the Zanal, but you can feel those rocks a little bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, with these guys, I could just stomp them. Much. Yeah. Yeah, I had no problems. And the outsole's still grippy. The you know, it, It's such an interesting lug design, right? Like it's not right. aggressive. They rely mm -hmm. on that Vibram super, uh, what is it, uh, light base that they use. Mega, mega, mega grip, grip, light base. No, you were yeah. light, right? Yeah. Light bit, light base. Yeah, I think it's still light mega base. grip, though. I think it's yeah, it's but it's the type they use. Mega grip, light base. Yeah, and it's sticky. Everyone's right all the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the grip <laughs> is really good. Property. I was I was really impressed. I think as we're still exploring trail shoes, that the grip was phenomenal. Like it's been it's been wet here recently, and our the trails in Monrovia have been very wet. Um, and muddy, but I had no traction issues. And no I was kind of surprised. I was yeah. expecting this to be a little bit problematic, but I was fine. Yeah, That's I cool. actually really enjoyed it. And it's it's bouncy, it's alive, mm. it's responsive. Like if I was running a trail race tomorrow, that's what I'm grabbing. Yeah, so, I agree. And at the same time, like you said, it's versatile in the fact that you can run slow in it too. And yeah. for me, I have a lot of proximity to trails here. And so mm -hmm. most of the time I do run road to trail. So um, I'm probably like maybe a mile to, yeah, about a mile from probably three or four different trails, mm -hmm. different heads. And so um, I definitely get road to trail all the time. Yep. I'm in the same boat where, again, had no trouble going road to trail. Now, this is not a shoe I would use as primarily a road shoe just because you're going to shred. You might eventually rip those lugs, but, you know, they are, they're handled me. So, yeah, definitely a sh it's, it's, it's a solid shoe. I'm just wondering what was different because it's Nathan. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's the same technical foams as the other ones, right? Unless no, no, yeah, don't it's, know. A well, no. it's a new yeah, midsole. It's a new midsole. Okay, I missed that. Okay. It's a super critical midsole. 
I it think what's be. what's I ha- I just got this one, so I haven't mm-hmm. actually tested it, so I'm not going to say anything about it. But I I'm excited to to get Miles. Do you guys know? Uh, you know, you said there's two plates. Mm-hmm. Just to talk about them, are they split? horizontally through the length of the shoe, right? Yes. So there's one medial They're, plate, one lateral plate? Yes, they parallel each other going here. And then, um, so I want to talk about Great that. Idea. Kind of yeah. what advantage, yeah, why do you, why is that potentially good? Why, you know, why could that be beneficial? Also, DJ, compare it to the Zanel a little bit more, just because I feel like the Zanel didn't get, maybe it got enough, you know, recognition last year, but I just think that's such an approachable, trail shoe and totally. can handle so many different types of runners, different types of running. And this is for those who just want a little more on it, but I don't know how similar they are. That's so I want to go into those two things. Let's talk about the plate first. Um, what do you guys see, you know, having a, a longitudinal split through a plate all the way through what's the purpose of the plate then? And what benefits drawbacks may that have? Well, it provides a little bit inherent stability, right? So you, you're basically almost creating a guide rail down the medial and lateral aspect with a, almost like a guideline straight down the middle of the shoe that just inherently gives you a little bit less deformation on the platform mm-hmm. from a medial lateral standpoint. Um, especially in trails, that can be important because the surfaces are not always level. Most of the time, they're not. Um, from a so mechanical this- standpoint... Um, it also lets you kind of play the shoe the way you want it. It's it's a little bit more versatile in that fact where you're not following a one piece of carbon fiber or P-backs, whatever. Um, if it's the spoon design, you're kind of following the tuning of that. And if you got two different plates, it all it lets you interact with that platform a little bit more uniquely to your own mechanics. Yeah. So it's interesting you talk about that. There's a level where creating more degrees of freedom by having two plates actually creates some stability when it comes to trail. Cause because it allows the deformation between sides without kind of a linked nature of of you know tilting a shoe one way or the other. But I think that's really fascinating. Matt, I think, you got anything on the y- plate design? Yeah, I think it makes sense from a trail shoe design. And David hit that really well that, you know, some of the solid plates are really going to pull you forward in a certain direction where this gives you a little bit more, I don't know if flexibility is the right term. I think David said it the right way with like a little bit more play with Because the big thing about trails is you're you're not usually going to have the same terrain. Your foot needs to be able to adapt to very quickly changing terrain, especially depend, depending on, you know, where you plant your foot, that kind of stuff. And that's where stuff like ankle sprains or some of the injuries you'll see more common in trail runners versus more stress-related stuff in in road runners. So having that, you know, the dual, the paralleling plates and having a little bit more of a pull through the front, yet, again, there's just a te- there is a little bit more flexibility through this. It's not like it's totally stiff. It's a, it's a rockered ride, but I feel like having that snappy ride but still having the ability to adjust your foot where it needs to go depending on the terrain is, is really a good idea and it does yeah. some interesting things for stability how much i didn't really test that it probably does pretty good for torsional rigidity so it feels like a stable shoe um yeah i noticed how, that on steep that, climbs the, yeah 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 oh it's good on steep climbs yes I said yeah steve climbs, like it doesn't deform like, like you steve? can feel that rigidity like when you're digging yeah. in and it's a sharp yeah. grade yep that may also be uh, why it Matt. feels it that may be why it also feels good for daily training too because it's it's just got you got to once you dig into it like steep climbs are really pushing the pace then you get that plate feeling but before that not as much it's a little stiff but Matt, how would you compare it to the vective stuff or like you know the the north face had the plate you know that's another plated trail option how would you compare it to that shoe um the the f- the vective definitely was stiffer throughout, like almost immediately. Okay. It took me forever to break that shoe in, and there's very oh, little flex yeah. to it to all at all. Whereas, and it and that felt good when picking up the pace. It didn't feel as good when going slower paces. Whereas, I think the dual plate felt. And to be fair, though, the one thing I do like about North Face is they they truly had the plate come up and become a sidewall. And so yeah. stability wise, they just do things differently. So I like that better in the flight vective. But from a ride perspective, I think there's a lot more bounce to 
the Tecton X, hopefully I'm saying that right, and just a little bit more versatility in my mind. Yeah. Cool. Whereas, so I would take this, I would take this shoe on like aggressive terrain where I didn't know it was coming at me. Whereas the flight vective, I might take on something that I know it's going to be a more controlled terrain. I can keep a consistent pace going. Cool. I don't know if that made sense. And yeah, it does. DJ, um, now compared to Zanel, let's go through that. Yeah. So it, <laughs> not trying to hype this shoe up too much, but. <laughs> It basically, it yeah. takes everything you like about the Zanal and makes it better. It like it Are makes you it a Zanal, little bit... not Zanal. Zanal, yeah, that's what I say. Oh, tecton, Tecton, the is the Zanal, Sierra Zanal, Zanal, right? The the famous uh, trail race, Sierra Zanal. I don't know. I could be wrong. I'm just that's I'm what just it's named after. <laughs> Great. But um, anyways, I my Tecton X is in the other room, so, um, but. It basically adds a little bit more stack. That sensation of the rocks underneath here, that goes away with the new plate. That rigidity adds a little bit of responsiveness, and you keep the bouncy ride, if not a more bouncy ride. So, I mean, if you're looking for super lightweight, nimble, you know, lots of ground feel, you probably are better with the Zenol. But you don't sacrifice all of it with the Tecton X either. You, you're still pretty connected to the ground, okay. um, which is nice. So there's there there is are some similarities in terms of run feel, but you if you're trying to go if you're trying to run a fast shorter trail race that's not super technical like would you rather Zanal? Okay, you'd probably go Zanal. Yeah, you could you could make a case for either one just depending on the runner. Um, but yeah, if you're going under 25k, like 25k and down, and if it's super runnable, you mm -hmm. might as well go Zanal. Um, but I think the range for ultra distances is much higher with the Tecton X. Mm -hmm. uh, I totally agree. Yeah. One of my buddies, I gave one of my buddies my Zanal to try it for his ultra, and he ended up not going with it just because he didn't feel like there was enough underneath for it. It was a 50K that he was doing, and he went with his tried and true shoe. So 